My name's Frank. I've been riding since about 2008. 2008 uh, is when I got my first Ruckus, my first bike ever. And I've been hooked ever since. Big bikes are cool, but small bikes are, are really fun. I got into the scene back in high school. Uh, a couple buddies uh, had the Honda Ruckus before and uh, it was during the times of Rob and Big and I feel like that was on MTV and that made the Ruckus really popular. So it started off with the high school friends. That's how I got into the Ruckus scene. The source for the, my build style and my inspiration uh, is very diverse. Um, you know, like, like I mentioned before, I'm, I started with the Ruckuses, but I definitely like the Harley Davidsons, uh, the Big Wheel Baggers, uh, a little bit of Bobber style, a little bit of Cafe Racer style. Um, you know, I like different uh, parts that are made by the community. Um, so I'd say community members definitely inspire my builds because uh, they make quality parts. Uh, I'd say the top three mods on my bike. Uh, first, I would start with the exhaust. It's a real JDM exhaust uh, by a company called Realize, purchased from Japan. The second would be the uh, the wheels. Uh, it's a classic Honda Dio style um, in the front and back. Third would be the battery box. Uh, the battery box is carbon fiber. It's an original ATR battery box from back in the day off uh, one of standard functions uh, original ATR turbo bikes. So going back in history, that's a, you know, started with standard functions for sure. The elements on my bike that make it a unique build kind of go with the theme. You know, I put a lot of billet parts on here, raw aluminum, silver, definitely put my share of carbon fiber on the bike. I love carbon fiber. And uh, this particular build has a lot of old school parts. It's got an ATR front end, which is part of the standard functions kit that came out, you know, one of the first kits back in the day. It's got a, a jock strap by Man in the Box, uh, making sure that it rigids up the frame and there's a, there's a frame brace and it's a, uh, Got a pair of uh, MPAB uh, swan bars that are definitely uh, discontinued. And uh, it's got a rear carbon fiber fender by Password JDM, which uh, who unfortunately went out of business, but I think it's a lot of tasteful mods. Uh, and finally, there's a Ronk stack that's a velocity stack uh, that's uh, very much sought after. And I think it all comes together and makes for a, a very tasteful build. I always like to uh, get the rpms up on my bike um, to kind of uh, really feel the power of the bike you know although it is a small 50 cc bike uh, you can really feel the mechanics working uh, so staying full throttle feels good kind of feathering the uh, the carburetor because it, it is an aftermarket carburetor uh, it's a uh, Keyhen PE24 carb, so you kind of have to feather it a little bit. And kind of, uh, you know, I used to be a little more of a hooligan rider, <laughs> kind of working to get to the front now. But now, you know, if I'm riding a slow bike, I definitely like to take a cruise and just kind of, um, just kind of cruise through traffic and let other people, you know, jam to the front and, and really take care of myself and and, uh, and the bike. Memorable experiences that I've had in the ruckus scene uh, and with my bike. Uh, one, let's uh, start, get the bat out of the way. I remember I was on a Friday night ride and uh, I did not know what was going on. Uh, the bike wouldn't function, it wouldn't start. And uh, I had a community member come up to me and uh, say, check the gas tank and what do you know, it was out of gas. <laughs> so I had to have several people uh, use their foot to uh, push me on the CVT cover to the next gas station. So that was probably a, an embarrassing and, and bad experience. Uh, but one of the most memorable experiences I have uh, probably riding through a Topanga Canyon uh, with a couple of my close friends who also are, in, are into the record scene and uh, kind of coming over and seeing Malibu and uh, stopping at Neptune's Net and enjoying some fish tacos and a couple beers. Um, you always remember that time and it was a really, really great ride. Top three must have mods. Uh, I would definitely start with the transmission. Uh, it's always nice to have a variator. People go with the Polini variator with a 5.6 gram weights, what it usually comes with. Second would be tires. You wanna get rolling, get away from those knobby tires, uh, the ones the stock ruckus comes with. 
get yourself a pair of Pirelli SL26 or Michelin boppers or Dunlop TT92s. There's a lot of different uh, styles out there. The third mod would definitely be the exhaust. The Ruckus has an attitude factor. The stock exhaust does not bring out. I would advise getting a nice uh, tune sounding exhaust uh, that will really complement your ride and, and really turn some heads. My future plans with the bike would have to be a uh, Zuma 125 swap. That seems to be a popular engine swap due to the fuel injection. You can rebuild it with a bigger top end or you can keep it stock. Reliability factor is there. Um, so I'd probably want to do a Zuma 125 swap. Oh, the scooter community is ever changing. Uh, I've been in the community uh, since 2008, 2009. Uh, that's, you know, pre-Grom for you guys who ride Groms. Uh, so I've definitely been around uh, when it was all ruckuses and all scooters. I've seen the transition into, uh, you know, more Groms and less ruckuses, uh, but it definitely makes them a gem when they come out and uh, feel pre uh, people appreciate them a little bit more now. Um, the scooter community is great, you know, uh, meeting like-minded individuals who share your hobby and passions and, and like to go out and, and roll around on something cool, uh, sometimes one of a kind. Uh, sometimes, you know, the, the group has the same bike and, you know, they're pulling wheelies and see how long they can ride. And, you know, I think I appreciate that uh, diverse group of individuals um, with their different riding styles.